I was homeless for a couple of years in the street. Really, really homeless. You know, no hope, despair. I lost everything. Well, 23 years ago, I, was, I got on drugs real bad, and I found out I was HIV positive. So I left my family and my kids, and I went to the streets, because I didn't know no better. I just didn't know if I was going to live or die, so I just ran homeless. Didn't want to get close to anything. I was addicted to drugs. It was my addiction where I lost everything. Well, let me tell you, I was out there in the streets and I was running buck wild. I was doing whatever it took to get my drugs and I didn't care how I got it, as long as I got it. And like I said, when a person has enough, is when you say, I am tired of being tired. It's that one day you wake up and you're like, oh my God, you know, look where I am, what am I doing, you know, this is not me. And then you start to think when you was a person, when you had a family, when you was doing the right things, and when you start to think a little bit, only then can you get help. Year round on any given night in Miami, there are virtually hundreds of individuals of all ages, race, and gender roaming the streets without a place to call home. This is true in every large or small city across our nation. Falling between the cracks of society, in this century, hidden away are the lives forgotten. Some of the main reasons individuals become homeless, as I stated before, economic reasons, substance abuse and um, mental health. Um, and it's also because they have been, um, they have been um, a part of many failed systems. What I mean by many failed systems, so many doors have shed on them because agencies social service agencies have not been able to address their issues. So a lot of times they give up and when those stressors come, they either result to substance abuse or they may have a misdiagnosed mental illness that eventually leads them to the street. Well, I think a lot of people would be really surprised that they think that it's disability, but the number one reason that people are homeless is because they're poor. Poverty is the number one reason that people are homeless. And it's simply, most people are a paycheck away. And again, this economy, we're seeing more and more people fall over the edge. I believe the main people become homeless in Miami-Dade County, and not just in Miami-Dade County, but on a, on a nationwide scale, it's because there are not enough affordable housing. In addition to the jobs that are uh, decreasing by the week, by the month. You also have a great number of people that due to the way the economy is, don't have a place to stay. They don't have a salary. They have lost all kinds of assistance because their money has run out after the, they don't have a job. Well, you got a bunch of them that are really, the economy really hurt them. Hard-working people that just can't find a job. According to the homeless statistics, right now there's about eight or 900 people still living on the street as we speak. And I'm sure that population is growing as we speak because of economic reasons. I've been witnessing here for the last couple of months um, something that I've seen that is unusual. Usually we have single individuals coming in asking for services who are homeless. Now we're seeing families coming in asking for services um, who's homeless. And the person that's leading the line of those services is the father. And it's because he's lost his job for economical reasons and just cannot maintain and have to come seek services for us and his, and his family. That's not, you know, it's not an easy thing because it's my wife, myself, and our son. Uh, he's eight years old, and uh, it's not a good feeling, you know, on the family situation. So, you know, it's uh, like he says, you know, it's getting to the point you got families coming in here with kids. You know, as for being a man, as uh, for being a provider, you know, I didn't want my son out there on the streets. I didn't want my wife on the streets, you know. And so, uh, a lot of people have too much pride to ask for help. I, listen, I'm an Irishman. I, I have no area asking for help. You know, I do have a lot of pride, but if you need help, you're going to have to ask for it. And then also help yourself. It is very scary and stressful, especially to explain to a child who's eight years or younger why we're here. Right now, we got a, I had a 17-year-old girl, which we cannot have her here because that is a kid, and you must be 25, which is, that's great. 
but we'll immediately we'll contact the hack. The hack will then have to pick her up because she's 17 and she's homeless. Defining homelessness is not a simple task. Understanding the root cause is the first step. But until one looks well into the heart of every human soul, we miss an opportunity to see ourselves and others. The question now is, can homelessness be preventable? One of the things that I think could be done is that we need more agencies to meet the need. I think that we need more mental health services. I think individuals who are walking the street need to be evaluated and to assess what their needs are. I think that we need to take some of these abandoned buildings we have and open them up um, for some type of shelter or treatment for individuals or permanent housing. I think that we need community involvement. I think what happens is a lot of people see homeless people and have already have opinions about them instead of trying to find out what the root of the problem is. And that's going to take, um, that's going to take collaborations from everyone in order to resolve this problem. We truly believe at the Miami Coalition for the Homeless that homelessness is preventable. That's why we're passionate about our work. There are many different creative solutions. Certainly we uh, support and work even locally, state and federally, to assure that people have a living wage, that, there's an, that they're receiving an income that would afford them to have housing. In my opinion, um, one of the things that could prevent homelessness is the um, federal government and as well as state and local agencies to um, increase uh, work opportunities and, and housing options. To increase work opportunities and housing options, but being homeless without a home address means they can't get a job or apply for housing. How can homeless people overcome this? A lot of times that's the reason why they cannot apply for a job or cannot get housing because they do not have a stable, stable address. Most of these places where you go fill out applications is asking you what is your last address? What is your recent employment? Where did you work last? And a lot of times that's the issue for the homeless. So a lot of things need to be done before that, such as job training, um, um, adequate housing. Those issues need to be uh, presented and addressed before you can embark on whether or not employment is, is available. Well, again, I think that what we really need to do is to not think about subside, people subsisting in poverty, but really getting them out of poverty. And that really means giving people a permanent place to stay with permanent income. There are a lot of employment programs where people can get, you know, numbers to have people call or P.O. boxes. But I think a lot of employers are a little skeptical about people who don't have phones where they can be contacted or if you're addressed as a shelter. This is another barrier to helping people get out of uh, homelessness and poverty.